Welcome to the Art of Lowriding. Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Ayala, and today we're in Ontario, California at Hoppo's Hydraulics. Now Hoppo's has been in business for over 20 years, and today they're celebrating their grand opening of their new location. And Hoppos has invited the lowrider community to join the celebration. Today we're going to get a chance to meet some great people and some incredible rides. Now I invite you to join us as we uncover the art of lowriding. I'm here with Jose in this incredible 67 Impala convertible. This thing is absolutely beautiful. And believe it or not, he drove this car to this event. Chrome undercarriage, chrome engine and all. This is this this is a typical lowrider by today's standards, and almost full show by yesterday's standards. So, Jose, run us through your car. Let us know exactly what you went through: uh, the paint, the interior, the engine, the undercarriage, the hydraulics. Who did the work? Give us a kind of a background on what what it took to build it, and what it looked like to start with. Well, to start with was all I got was for 600 bucks was the body and the frame. Really? Firewall? No, nothing. It was just the firewall, no engine, no fenders, no hood, no nothing. Oh, wow. And no interior. No, The trunk was cancered out. The quarter panels were cancered out. The floors were cancered out. And what I did, I started buying, looking for parts, getting pieces, getting, you know. Piece and by it, piece. Piece by piece. I mean, this part was and you know, with a house with a wife and six kids, Man. it had to be done little by little. I didn't have a choice. <clears throat> my, my my wife, she was with me full time, you know, she supported me and she's like, okay, no, we'll do it in a slow pace, you know. And we started working on it. So I took the body off the frame and I just had the ro ro rolling chassis. Nice. What I did is I took it all, me and my brother, Sporty, we took it all apart in my backyard. And we just took the all rusted frame, we took it to Inlet Powder Coat, the guy powder coated it for me. And at the same time, I bought all new suspension, bushings, A-armors, tie rod ends. Mm -hmm. The differential, rebuilt it. I rebuilt everything. I got it, I took it all to get chrome. So you rebuilt the chassis uh, all, every, all by yourself? Everything, okay. everything. So then how about the engine? When did that come into the play? The engine was sitting on a stand, it was just the block. And I started buying valve covers, pulleys, brackets, Smart, carburetors, yeah. little, little bit at a time, you know, right, every right. week. I would set aside a hundred bucks every week, and I'd buy me one part. The next week, I'd buy me another part. That's dedication. Yeah, and then my wife knew she knew I was spending money on it, but she knew it wasn't that much. Yeah, did you do the body work on the car yeah. first? Yeah, we finished. Well, it was just the body, and then uh, I had these chrome. I had them sitting fender in my wells. shed. Yeah, my fender wells chrome. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in my shed, and then the fenders I had them already done. They were just on the side, and then the hood was done. It was just on the side. The trunk was done. The doors were done. I was just waiting for the rest of the body to be done. Mm -hmm. Finally, when we finished it, I took everything to the paint shop and we shot the clear, the you know, pearls, the flakes, and then I got that done. And then I took the car over to um, to Mike Lamberson. So he did all the striping. So the striping is under the clear. The striping is all under the clear. Yeah, just to protect the striping and the murals, because the murals I did myself. I did this one. Right there in my backyard. You did them yourself. I did them myself. And then the door jams, I did the, the murals too. So backyard ingenuity. Backyard everything, man. So what, what, you have a 350. What, a what tranny that you have on it? I have a uh, turbo 350 also. Tranny. Okay. Yeah. So who did the upholstery? You went into the upholstery? The upholstery, I didn't do none of the upholstery. I went to a guy in uh, Upland. His name is uh, Jesus from Dynamic Upholstery. Take us to the, the hydraulics. Who, who, what's, who did the, the hydraulics? hydraulics themselves, or? I also did myself. <laughs> I bought the pumps from a shop that sold them. I told him how I wanted He gave me a, a set of chrome pumps. I was stuck. I didn't want to put um, the regular black lines. The hoses. The hoses. So you did hard lines. So I did hard lines, but I had never bent hard lines before. You did it yourself. I bent myself. <laughs> I just went and I, got, I told the guy, look, give me uh, these two fittings, then yeah, yeah. flared, and then I'll just figure it from there. It looks like you have uh, disc brakes, uh, you have them all the way around, front, back. Uh, I went with disc brakes only in the front. Okay. Uh, I bought the conversion kit from our online source and then I uh, just put them on myself and awesome. you know, left the rear the same. Didn't want to awesome. mess with it. The wheels? The wheels, I went with 13s, 13.7 standard low rider style. All right. I Gotta have it. Yeah. Didn't want chrome, all chrome. I didn't awesome. want nothing fancy. It just, you know, I wanted to stick to the original style low riding. Great. That's, that's the, what we love. <laughs> well, Jose? 
great job. Thank you. It's man. beautiful, man. Thank you so it's much. Beautiful man. car. It's a it's a great representation, uh, yeah. <laughs> representing the lowrider community. And um, I want to thank you for showing us and spending the time with us. Not this problem. Jose's '67 Impala convertible. Thank you. I'm here with Richard, the owner of this beautiful cherry red '65 Impala. And Richard, give us a, a background on your car, what it took to build, what you've done to it, what it was before you got it. Let us, uh, let us in on uh, what, what, what behind the scene, what it took to build it. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, when I got this car, I've had this car now for probably about 17 years. Um, when I first got it, it actually initially was uh, my uncle's car. Uh, he started restoring it. Uh, he basically ran out of money. Um, so the car sat at the body shop for literally a couple years. Which um, is the case a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. And when I got involved with it, I went basically up to the body shop owner and said, how much finish this car off so I could take it. So what kind of condition was the car in then? Uh, at the time, the condition of the car was basically just a shell. Started uh, getting money together as I could. You know, at the time I was in college, just had a little part-time job. So, you know, money was hard to come by. So. Um, but just slowly, you know, a lot, a lot of trips to the junkyard, looking for little parts that I need. So, when did when did you actually, and who did the paint that's current on the car? The, the, the paint that's currently on the car was done probably about uh, two and a half, maybe three years ago, and uh, that was done um, done at um, a Turtles um, Auto Body in Pomona, which is like right around the corner from my so house. So, when they did the paint job on the car, they painted the undercarriage. Did they paint the engine compartment? Yeah, too? yeah. He basically. He, Pulled the engine, um, you know, he painted the undercarriage, he painted the firewall, uh, painted inside the door jams, you know, painted the gas tank for me, painted the frame. Um, it wasn't a frame moth restoration because I really didn't have enough money to go that far with it, but he was able to paint, you know, uh, the undercarriage and everything. So, so well, when the trunk was modified, the trunk was already modified actually. Um, when I did take it to get repainted, uh, the the new body guy um, actually tweaked it a little so the lines lined up a little bit better. So he got it to, to line up better, but um, it was it was done by the original body shop did that. And then the sound system? Uh, the sound system I, I put in um, through steps, stages. Initially I started with basically just mids and highs. Uh, and I had a little 10 inch uh, subwoofer back there and I rolled it like that for a few years. <laughs> you know, and then once again, you know, as, as you come by more money, yeah. Um, I got a little more money together, so my mids and highs were good. So I just I just put uh, three subwoofers in the back. Uh, they who built did, a custom. Who did, the, uh, who did it? Uh, Radioactive uh, Auto Sound uh, did it. Um, and like I said, that was about a year ago. And when he did that, um, I had Art um, from Hoppo's do uh, change around the hydraulics a little bit because the way it was. I had to change it to get the stereo system and everything to fit in there. So he redid the hydraulic. So he redid the hydraulic uh, configuration. All the parts were basically the same. He just built a new rack and, and changed it up a little bit. And the engine? But like I said, the engine was rebuilt by, by my neighbor, so um, yeah. that it, it runs really good. It's, it's, it's still a stock 283. Uh, tranny put in a 700 R4. Oh, nice. Uh, it, it, it's night and nice. day. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it shifts. You can't even feel it shift. It just goes <laughs> continuously in one gear to the next. The freeway is like, you know, the, the engine's low RPMs on the freeway, especially, you know, running 13s, you go on a power glide and your yeah. RPMs 13s, are you got gold-plated 13-inch uh, wheels on there? <laughs> yeah, they're uh, gold-plated nipples, um, gold-plated hubs on there, uh, 13, uh, 13, 7 roasters. Oh, and the engraving that you did? Uh, the engraving, um, I recently had my upper A-arms engraved um, by engraver by the name of Hernan. Uh, I just recently did my suspension a few months ago, so that's kind of where I'm starting my engraving at. Richard, thank you for showing us your beautiful car and Danny. appreciate it. All the hard work you did is worth it. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Richard's car is another fine example of today's lowrider. I'm here with Art and Alex's son, owners of Hoppo's Hydraulics. and. Uh, I want to uh, ask you, Art, to give us a background of where you started and how, how you got to where you are today. Uh, it started in the early 80s, actually in Walnut, California. Um, that's where I started doing the mini trucks, bugs, and then it led into the low air stuff. Um, we moved the shop to Ontario in 1989 into a real industrial building, and that was the start of Hoppo's. And so uh, how long did you stay in that industrial building? Uh, the first shop in Ontario was located off of Palmetto Street in Ontario. Uh, we were at that building 
till 1994. So <clears throat> how, how big was it? Uh, how many guys did you have working for you at that time? It was a one-man operation uh, till 1994, and it was about 1,300 square feet. And now? And now we're in a 7,000 square foot building and getting ready to open our second location with the machine shop. Awesome. And now you have your son working with you? Yes, I have my second generation son right here, <laughs> Alex. He's the next in line and uh, with a little younger mind, with a little more creativity. Okay, now um, give us a, uh, a kind of a uh, background or maybe just like a real easy glance of what a, the different setups between a, an air setup and a hydraulic setup. A uh, conventional hydraulic setup uh, consists of an electric pump, which is powered by a set of batteries, uh, which flows the fluid from the reservoir tank to the actual hydraulic cylinders. And that raises the and car. And that raises the car up and down, correct. And air? An air is kind of the same concept, but it's an air compressor that's pumped on. Stored air is released into the air valves, which picks up the airbags. Awesome. You know, dispel a myth for us, because a lot of people think if you have hydraulics, uh, you have to have a bad ride, and, uh, and, and air is slow and just kind of goes up and down. So tell, tell us a uh, uh, The myth about hydraulics order. and the rough, stiff ride, um, it falls back a lot onto insulation. Um, a lot of guys will cheap out and take a pair of stiff coils, cut it in half, put it front and back. Instead of using the proper coils and proper shocks, you can maintain a soft ride on any car as long as you take the time and... Um, Build it correctly. Build it correctly. <laughs> uh, tell us what kind of work you do here besides the hydraulic and air ride uh, setups that you install. What type of suspension work that you do? Uh, we do a lot more than just your basic uh, air and hydraulic jobs. We also do full chassis fabrication and chassis builds along with four link suspension and uh, anything related to suspension and uh, framework, we do it here. Anything chopping and remodeling and anything like that, we do. It's a one-stop shop for suspension modification. Definitely. Okay, uh, let us in. Are you working on any special projects, uh, new pumps, uh, anything special that you guys are developing? Uh, there's a couple new things we're working on. Uh, of course, top secret. <laughs> but there is a couple uh, things that we did just debut. Uh, the RF1 pumps. Um, I don't know if you've seen them or not in uh, Albert's car, Al Ray. Totally off the wall, totally different, and uh, just change it up a little bit. Not so traditional. Uh, we want to kind of make things out of the ordinary. If uh, so, it's a it's a total it. billet pump or designed by you guys. Yeah, the pump is uh, fully uh, 6061 billet aluminum, fully machined here uh, in California. Um, it's all U.S. and uh, it's uh, only available here, actually. Uh, we are the manufacturers and makers of it and builders, designers. Awesome. Um, and those are available now for sale, the RF1 pump. Um, what we're doing right now is actually we're, we're really just pushing towards the car clubs. And uh, without them, we wouldn't be here today. So we're actually doing this new thing. Uh, it's actually national car club support. And uh, we're backing it 100%. Uh, it's one of our little functions we got going on now so we are going to try to do some more cruise nights and you know, gatherings and stuff for the community just you know so everyone just a basic you know get together keep everyone out of trouble awesome awesome okay good good well it's art thank you very much for, you, for helping thank us with this interview up. and uh, it, this this uh wonderful thing that you did for the community putting it together everybody had a good time here it was uh it was great food a uh, family atmosphere um and obviously, you can see this is a family affair here, a uh, family business. Art's a great guy. I've known him for many years. Um, and it was, I had a lot of fun. Everybody here had a great time. So hopefully we can do this again. Oh, definitely again. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to all the car clubs that did come out and show support. Uh, we back you guys up 100%. And thank you for showing the love. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. I look forward to seeing you next time as we uncover the art of low writing.